I'd like to give an example of high frequency energy and low frequency energy. And I don't want to use the language of what's good and what's bad, because good and bad is just up to human judgment. I had done a session on someone and the person that ended up coming in was a childhood friend of theirs. And they had grown up together, they were, they were excellent friends, but the friend had passed. And the friend had passed by their own hand, unfortunately, it was, it was a suicide. And I have very clear uh, points that I like every spirit to come through so that they go through this distillation process with me. And that's always, if you're gonna come through, you need to come through with love and with empathy, with compassion, with clarity and understanding. And if you can't come in that way, then I'm gonna ask you to wait. And because sometimes they, you know, sometimes they do come into place. Sometimes they come in and it's very traumatic. But I don't wanna see that information first. I wanna see the information that brings understanding. So that's how they come in. So when this individual came in and I'm doing a session with this, with this man, I'm bringing in all the great stuff, you know? Here, here's how they interact with you. Here's how the person is watching you. Here's the messages that they wanna say. But at the end of the session, the individual said, you talk about all those things, but that's not who they were. This, this individual was not like that at all. They got very, very dark. In fact, their energy was like an ogre. And the challenging thing about hearing the living say that is the moment that he said that, the energy stamp of his friend who had passed changed. It changed very, very quick because then my brain kicks in and, I, and then I start to wonder, oh, well, if I'm not asking them to come in through the filter that I desire, what is the filter that you see them through? And when that happened, my filter of, you know, love and empathy and compassion and clarity and understanding was gone. And what ended up coming in was energy that, you know, denser, heavier material always sinks to the bottom. So that information dropped into the room. And all of a sudden I was getting all the information <clears throat> of all the things that were not high frequency, they were very low frequency. And I addressed it and I said, well, I don't do that. And if I ever address that energy, I will only talk about it if it gets you to be at a place where you can start to have more understanding. So I'm not gonna sit with this energy. So the person that I was doing a session with, they're the one that had to kind of pivot and work hard to say, okay, well, got it. We did have a good relationship. It didn't end well because of all this other stuff. But here's where the information gets tricky. At the end of the session, I turned off my computer and I went to take a shower. And I live alone, so my, my, my bathroom is open and I'm in the shower. And I hear my dog freaking out. In, in, in my living room. And my dog is a non-barking dog. He doesn't make any noise. So I hear the dog attacking, like, like attacking something. And in that moment, I'm showering and I know exactly what is going on. And I say to myself, I forgot to close the spirit door because I had opened the door for this individual to come through and to have a conversation. But at the end of a session, I need to send the person back with you, but I had forgotten to do that. And not only had I forgotten to do that, I had forgotten to change the filter, right? So that energetic filter was still vibrating in a low frequency, and it was in my home. It was in my home. So instead of feeding my fear, which is my reaction, and I think that's most people's reaction of when you see what you think is a ghost, you are very fearful and very afraid of that, of that information. And I have to work hard to not be afraid. So I said, instead of freaking out right now, I'm gonna finish my shower on my own time, then I'm gonna go deal with it. And I did. And I walk out of my shower, I have my towel around myself, and I walk into the living room, um, and I was immediately hit like it, was, it was like I walked into a wall. And that wall was this large energy of who this other individual was. And not only did I walk into them, but I started to feel like I was being suffocated. Like the air was being pulled out of my system. Now all of this is stuff that is very scary to a lot of people. It's not scary to me because I, I have learned that I have more control than they do. So I quickly pulled myself out of the experience and said, and, and said out loud, instead of choking me, you need to get out of my house and I'm gonna close that door of your low frequency, I'm gonna ask you to vibrate higher and then leave. And that's what happened. So I asked the person to quickly pivot, they did, they left my house, but 
During this entire experience, I could hear that my furniture in my kitchen was being moved. I could hear chairs sliding. And again, this is something that you would consider a poltergeist. It was not a poltergeist. It was me not being in control of the energy that is happening around me. Could I view that as a haunting? Sure, I don't, because my house is not haunted. I just wasn't communicating on a high frequency level with this person that has passed. When I walked into my kitchen, my, my dining room chairs were moved. They were all moved because it, they were trying to get my attention. The individual never came back into my home. The following day, I had a conversation with the person that I had had a session with, and I asked more inquisitive questions this time, you know, and I did find out that this individual had passed by asphyxiation. They had put a, a bag on their head in order to create their own demise. And that was more about my own brain, just wanting to draw uh, connective puzzle pieces together. But it was all an, a, a really wonderful example. And I use the word wonderful because it was wonderful. You know, the result was, this is a great example for me to work on not paying attention to darker, low vibrating frequency. You don't have to experience fear. We do, but we don't have to. You can change it, but you have to change it. You, the living, have to change it.